Every pipe tells a story, when and where it was made, and if it's a used pipe, who owned it before you? That can tell a really great story. Sometimes you don't know, though, and so in those cases, every pipe can tell its own story. What if, for example, you could find the pipe that was owned by Hans Christian Andersen when he wrote The Ugly Duckling and The Littlest Mermaid? Or you own the pipe that was owned by Sergeant Preston, Mounted Police. Anyway, in this video today, I'm going to show you some of the pipes I've been working on and try to imagine some of the stories that they tell me. So don't go away. I'll be right back. Hi everybody, this is David Dorian Ross and this is my new channel, The Hobby Vlogger. If you'd like to find out more information about how to do hobbies, what hobbies can teach you, and what else you might be good at in life, then please hit the subscribe button. Okay, today we're talking about estate pipe restoration. Some of you may know that I've been working on some estate pipes. It's a brand new hobby, it's a brand new pursuit of mine. But I've started on a couple and I wanted to show you what I've got going so far and to talk a little bit about the story that I think each pipe is telling me. Now this is the first pipe I worked on here. Um, I did some recording of this uh, beforehand and this is the little pipe that I started calling the ugly duckling because when I first got it, here, let's see if I can get a close up here. When I first got it, it was in such terrible, terrible shape that it really was ugly. It had cracks in it, uh, there was a big chip in the bowl, uh, there, were, there was some filler, there was a, a, a kind of a, a stain on it that was all sort of burned. The interior of the pipe was all nasty and messy and there was a ton of oxidation and tooth marks on the stem. And this was sort of my first project, so I just started uh, to uh, try out all the different things that I had been learning from other people's videos. And I want to give a shout out to all the people that I learned from. Um, and I'm going to put some uh, references down in the comment section below there, in the, in the, the, the description section below there. Um, in, uh, in particular, I want to thank the, uh, the Bear Pipe uh, because he taught me an awful lot about stuff. Anyway, as I began to work on this, a real beauty started to take place um, with this pipe here. It began to take on a whole different character until it really started to be extraordinarily beautiful. Let's see if I can get close enough so you can see the grain in this pipe. Underneath all that terrible stain that was on there beforehand, there's this really lovely grain that began to come out. I did restain this and I restained it a very light saddle tan. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus on the stem here. The stem had ton of oxidation but with um, the, the help of some fine mesh wet dry sandpaper we sanded it all off. We got rid of the teeth marks and put a tiny drop of obsidian oil on and oh it's just it's fantastic. Now um, I also want to say again thanks to the, the bear pipe because he made a mention of a Japanese pottery technique called kintsugi, which is the art of celebrating the flaws and faults, especially in pottery. And just at the time when I saw his video, one of my students actually also made mention of this. And so I went, oh, well, I'm going to take that as a message. And so what I decided to do was to fill in the um, cracks and the chip in the lip of the pipe with gold. There is the gold on that and it just sort of serves as this really interesting highlight against the grain. I, I'm trying to get close enough so you really see how it does it justice here. This is, this is an edible gold, the kind of stuff that you put on cupcakes and stuff like that, mixed with an epoxy for wood and then lightly filled in. So not knowing anything about who owned this pipe before, I began to imagine, you know, I had started calling this the ugly duckling pipe because it was, you know, in such a terrible condition beforehand. And I began to wonder, you know, imagine 
a story. What if this was the pipe owned by Hans Christian Andersen? And this pipe was passed down from father to son until finally his great-grandchildren decided to let it go and it wound up mysteriously on eBay where I picked it up in very sad condition. Its former glory completely hidden underneath generations of grime. But underneath all of that was still the glory of this pipe infused with the genius of the writer. And so every time you pick up this pipe, some of that genius can flow into you as you smoke and you draw in the smoke of the pipe tobacco. Perhaps you draw in some of the ideas and images, maybe untold stories of Hans Christian Andersen. Anyway, that's just the kind of thing that my brain does to me. This is the first one, the ugly duckling. The Hans Christ now, I want to acknowledge that there is a pipe already out there on the market called the Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, so uh, I'm not making any claim that this is an actual pipe owned by Hans Christian Andersen or that this is the pipe that's um, trademarked. This is just an imagination. The second pipe that I've been working on is this one. And I didn't really take very many um, pictures of this before I started to work on it, which I, I kind of regret, because, oh my God, this was an ugly, ugly pipe. This is a pipe that is marked Foxcroft, and the only thing that I can say of it, it, it had some really unattractive brown stain on it, almost like paint, almost like a, a just like a, a lacquer on top of it that was not a very interesting color whatsoever. It's pretty downright ugly. And it was carved, it was, it was like gouged and etched in not even sandblasted or rustication. I did my best to sand it down. And when I was sanding it down, I got rid of all the old stain and I, I sanded off all of the, um, the carvings and, and faux rustication until it was smooth. And this really amazing grain appeared. I'm gonna try to see if I can get any closer so that you can see some of that. Now there are some flaws in here, some cracks and um, gouges, and I couldn't get it back to true round because of all of the carvings and etchings that I had to try to get off there. In a way, it really added to the romance of this pipe. Now, it's a fairly long stem. By the way, the mouthpiece <laughs> The mouthpiece that came with this pipe was not even the original mouthpiece. There was some kind of uh, cut down mouthpiece and stem from another pipe somewhere that someone had literally whittled down to stick into the end here. And I just noticed today that there's a big crack right at the end of the, of the um, shank that that mouthpiece uh, had just ruined. So I'm gonna be working and fixing on that. I love this pipe. This pipe is rugged, it is manly, it's a, it's a Canadian, and, it, and in particular it's a type of Canadian called a lumberman. So the lumberman is the Canadian, it's got this really long um, shank there, but it, it, it's in an oval rather than true round. So that makes it, according to the research that I've done, a lumberman. I'm trying to get this, like I am going to be my own <laughs> sort of display model there. And as I worked on this pipe, and I still got more work on By the way, this is not a stain. I didn't stain this pipe. This is just a little olive oil that I put a couple of coats on there, and it began to deepen the color, but there's no stain on this at all. Um, I don't even have a buffing wheel, so I uh, didn't even put any uh, carnauba or anything else on here like this. It's just, just soaked right in the, the briar just drank it up uh, to, to give it this really dark and very handsome kind of look to it. So who would smoke a pipe like this? Who would smoke this kind of pipe? Rugged, manly, outdoorsy, a Canadian. Well, the only Canadian that I grew up with uh, was Sergeant Preston. York of the Northwest Mounted Police. For those of you who are too young to remember this, that was an old TV show. It was actually old black and white serial reels. And he would uh, ride, he'd always get his man kind of thing. And I imagine, you know, as he's out there in the Yukon, camped out in the snow with his dog sled team or his 
big horse, you know, on the trail of, you know, Yukon Pete or some other, some other bad guy that he would sit by the campfire at night smoking this pipe. And whenever I imagine pipes associated with the characters who might have owned them before, what I really come up with is the adventures that happened along the way. And if this pipe could talk, what stories would it tell? When I eventually put these up for sale or give away or trade away, uh, which is my intention to, to do, uh, I'm going to include a write-up of maybe one or two short stories from each pipe. So that's my second one. Now the third pipe is actually a project that hasn't quite begun yet. I've been tinkering around with it, but I've been actually deliberately not doing too much because I wanted to wait to, to do a video like this one. This is, let me just go here for it. So this is a pipe in totally bad shape. It's got, let me see if I can show it to you. It's got a huge crack right there in the bowl. Um, I've actually been working on cleaning this up somewhat, so it doesn't look as bad as it really was when it came to me. This is all black. There's some kind of sandblasting here, so it's very textured, but it, it's, it's worn down quite a bit. This pipe was actually probably smoked quite a bit, and, but then at some point oversmoked. It had huge amount of cake in there, which I have cleaned all out. I did a, a salt treatment on it. Um, I've washed it at least once with Murphy's um, oil soap. Um, and I'm about to go back and do it again. Um, the uh, stem has uh, gone through an oxyclean bath for deoxidation, deoxidization, deoxidation. <laughs> and of course, one of the first things I do when I first get a pipe is I'll soak the bowl in 151 rum and I'll soak the stem in a, um, in a bleach solution just to you know get rid of all the cooties. Uh, then we wash them all out, dry them all off, and then the real process begins. So I, I haven't done much with this. Now this, this pipe, oh man. This pipe looks like it was carved from stone, like, like it came all of a piece uh, it's rugged. It is like it has. It, it could withstand all the elements of nature, right? It's the kind of a pipe that a real warrior would smoke. You know, Aragorn or um, one of the other warriors of the of the Rohirrim, or maybe Jon Snow when he got older little Game of Thrones. I have to confess that I'm only up to season four in Game of Thrones, so don't tell me if Jon Snow's dead. I don't want to know. <laughs> anyway, um, that's a whole other story. But I, I imagine, you know, this pipe spending its life north of the wall on those cold winter's nights when um, there's not much joy in the world that you can imagine except maybe a short smoke in your pipe and you got to put it out quickly so that the wildings won't catch you. Anyway, this pipe is my next project and I wanted to show it to you real quick before it gets much further down the line so that you can see some of the prog progress in the future video. Anyway, that is my story today. Every pipe has a story and if you don't know the story Every pipe can tell you a story if you just take a look and really let your imagination run wild. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching, everybody. Listen, um, if you haven't already done so, uh, you should subscribe to this channel, and I'll tell you why. Because this channel is not just about pipes and pipe smoking. It's about hobbies in general. And ho what hobbies can teach us is things that we may have overlooked in life, talents that we might have that we never knew we had. Like, I never knew I could do anything with my hands that, to make art, and that's what I'm trying to do with these pipes. It's been raining out here uh, in Southern California, cats and dogs, um, and so everything that I've been doing has been indoors, but I'm dying to start on my next project, which is a very special kind of walking stick, 
And so very soon, keep your eyes open for a video on that. As soon as the weather clears up a little bit, I can go outside and start working. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. Ask me some questions. I promise to answer them or give you a big shout out uh, in the next video. And as I always say, get yourself a hobby. I'm David Dorian Ross. I'll see you next time.